Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Fantasy Football and welcome to my video. It is time for Game Week 8 review. And I have also activated my wildcard. So what I'm going to do is go through my team for Game Week 8 and talk about each position and give you guys my thoughts on their performance. And then we're going to go through my new team going into Game Week 9 and onwards. Alright, so for Game Week 8, as you can see, I've got 35 points. Now, as you all know, I am recording this um, while Newcastle is playing Manchester United. It's still nil-nil. And as you can see, the average points and overall rank hasn't updated. Do not worry, I'm going to create a video uh, later on in the week anyway, give you guys a proper update. So the average should be around 36. So I am below the average because uh, I took a minus four point here. Now that means I got 31 points. Really low, but there's a lot of FPL managers got a similar score or just a little bit higher, like in the 40s. Um, so it's been a disappointing uh, game week for a lot of FPL managers out there. And as you can see, my overall rank is 223. Um, I just checked and I'm around 285,000. So I'm still happy, actually. I'm still happy that I'm around there. But with the team that I have right now, I need, I need to adjust it. I need to make some changes to, to kind of stay in this position and move forward. That is the key and that is why I wildcarded. And plus... In the beginning of the season, I did say that after game week 8, I probably would wildcard. Last year, I wildcarded after game week 4. That worked out really well for me. Um, I thought I'll give it a go in game week 8 and see how it is. And then next year, I probably will adjust that again. So as for my team, as you can see, Ryan in goal with 7 points. Brighton beating Tottenham 3-0. Did not expect that. I thought Harry Kane and Song was going to score a lot of goals because... They lost midweek in the Champions League. That did not that did not even happen at all. Brighton played so well. Like really, really good. I was so impressed with them. The way they kept the ball, the way they I was like, is this even Brighton? What is going on? They were fantastic. Fantastic guys. Um Van Dyke. <sighs> Liverpool conceding again. Um yeah, with only two, uh, Liverpool beating Leicester right at the end. Miney winning the penalty, Milner scoring the penalty. Yeah, this is disappointment for um, Leicester. Leicester actually played really well. Um, but yeah, Liverpool's continue their winning run. Lundstrom here, I played him. He got me a clean sheet. I'm happy with that. I know he's got a yellow card as well. Actually, did he get a yellow card? Yeah, he got a yellow card. I was like, what? Where's the yellow card? Got a yellow card, five points. You know what? Fantastic. I'm happy with that. I'm so like it. The first half, the first 60 minutes, uh, it was looking all good. Everyone had a clean sheet at the back, but then uh, everyone started to lose near the end. Look at team with two. I think it's time for him to go. I can't. I can't hold a player like this. He's too expensive, and I can get so much. Like, I could get so many players with this price tag. Um, that could get me a lot of points than Luka Dean. Next up is Salah with only two points. Got a knock, so he's a little bit injured. Uh, you know, it is international break, so he should recover. I think he should be fine anyway. But there's a lot of FPL managers are thinking to get rid and bring in Mane or maybe even just go without Liverpool players. Um, but yeah, he's got a knock right now. We need to find out how long like he's injured for. Uh, I think he should be fine. Sterling, blanking. <laughs> oh man, I brought in Sterling for a minus four point here. I mean, it was it was a good move to be honest with you. Aguero played as well. It could have been, you know, on another day it could have been a different story. But there's a lot of people who are trying to get rid of this player as well. McGinn. Now, I know what happened to him. It's because he was playing more deeper. Than usual, so that's what's happened. His position was completely different. He wasn't like in that camp position or a little bit more further outfield. So that is the problem. Um, that's what's happened in this game. Even though uh, Aston Villa <laughs> scored five goals, uh, I, I knew that this game was going to be a high-scoring game. That's why I was like, oh my god, Begin's going to be a great option. 
but I did not expect him to play a little bit deeper, which kind of sucked for us. So yeah, that was a little bit disappointing there that he played it in a different position than normal. Uh, Mason Mount with seven points, fantastic um, transfer here. Very good fixtures coming up as well for Chelsea. I'm looking to to double up, maybe even triple up on Chelsea players. I think these fixtures here, they've got a chance to score a lot of goals in. Joshua King, only two. Uh, I think these fixtures coming up should be fine. So I'm not too worried. I can always remove him um, to Wilson if I wanted to. Because I do have a, a wild card. Aguero played. Uh, I kind of felt that he might play. That's why I didn't get rid of him to Abamian. Only two points. I don't even I don't even know where to start. Only two points. Very bad. And Pookie with one point. There was no party. Well, there was this yellow party. <laughs> John McGinn got yellow. Pookie got yellow. And the bench here, Rico with two points. So, as for my team for game week eight, it has been a disappointing game week. I'm not too disappointed um, because it has been a low scoring game week anyway for a lot of FPL managers. All of the big um, premium players that we have did not perform, did not bring in the points. And, like, looking at my team right now, it's okay. It's okay for the next uh, game week. Uh, so that's game week nine. But I need protection. Just in case there are some uh, players that might get injured along the way. As you can see, my subs. They're, they're this, I've got Gibson here. He's not even playing. Hayden's not even playing for a couple of games. I've got Rico. I, I need a better um, bench here. A, a, a solid bench if I'm going to be wildcarding. For, for, the, for the long run. That's what I'm looking at. And, and I need these players to swap them around. I know a lot of people will say, why would you need a bench player? Well, you need them just in case one of your player um, is suspended or takes a knock. Then you can bench that player. Then you can use one of your subs. Then you can bank a transfer. That is the that is the kind of the game plan that I'm going with. And there's a, a few players here like Luke and Dean needs to go. Uh, Van Dijk, probably... Um, Aguero, Puki, maybe Kin, but I need to sort this bench out. I need to get a, a stronger team. I'm still inside the 300k, and if I do not use the wild card, like now, then I think if I keep taking hits, then I'm going to go down, down, down. That is it. That's how I feel. And as you can see, I have activated my wild card i still got 2.8 i'm slowly fixing this team i'm slowly adding the players that i want and slowly we will create an amazing team together in this international break okay here we go so this is the transfer menu where i can make unlimited transfers because i have activated my wild card now, it is early stages, and I'm still figuring out a few players. Um, I do have a plan in mind, but with the players, I still need to think about it. So, I'm just going to like uh, bring in players that I think is going to do well. And then later on along the week, I'll post another video um, with like drafts for um, wildcard team. You guys let me know in the comments below which player I desperately need to have in my team. Which players that is going to do well for me for the next coming game weeks? Let me know in the comments below. And then I'll try my best to help you guys out as well. If you are using your wildcard. If you are going to be transferring a few players. Then this should help you out as well. Okay. So the plan is for now. Is to look at the next four. Or the next eight game weeks. Now the eight game weeks is going to be a little bit difficult. So I'm going to try my best just to look at the first four. And then the next uh, probably video, I will look into more details about these players. And I'll look into not only for the next four, but I'll look into the next eight game weeks. Obviously, there's going to be some injuries. There's going to be players that is out of form. Then we need to switch them around, of course. But if I could get a solid team 
with good bench as well, then I can bank the transfers, then make those changes. Okay. Now, with the goalkeepers, I'm just going to stick with this 4.5, 4 million um, kind of price tag here. I'm going to try and hold in Lundstrom here, Rico. Uh, I'm going to remove Gibson here. Siyonchu here, a Leicester player. It's fantastic. I'm going to have. And Van Dijk, I could remove. So I'm not too sure about him right now. Mount is fine. I uh, need to remove Hayden. Uh, Sterling, I do need a Manchester City cover. So Sterling is going to stay here. I do need a Liverpool um, cover as well. Mane or Salah is really up to you. But because I'm using my wild card, I want to scrape out as much as money as possible. Then Mane is going to be here. Then John McGinn. If he plays deep again, then I, I want to get rid. I do not want a player that is going to play a little bit. Um, it's not going to play like where I want him to play. So from now, he's, he's going to be here because of his price tag. And up front, Tammy Abraham is new in my team. And Joshua King here, I can remove him to Wilson. So I'm just going to mark as a little line. And Abamian is in my team. So there is a couple of players that I'm not too sure about. There's a players that I have to get rid. And there's a few players that I desperately want in my team. And of course, I need to get rid of Hayden because I do want a playing player. Yes, he should be playing after once he's come back from his suspension. But I need a player now. So I could remove him and get someone else. Now, I could go and remove a king here to... Um, where's that player here? Wilson. Let's go and see how much he is. 7.9. Uh, Hayden. Let's put these back again. And I still got uh, 0 0.5. So if I remove Gibson here and get another 4.8 probably two or three it was kelly now i don't really want to go with really cheap defenders i do want a solid defender so i need to make some adjustments in a sec but this is what i'm trying to do slowly figure out which kind of players i want for the long term and i got um 4.9 here for the midfielders there we go 4.9 uh, i guess cantwell should be a good uh player to kind of use and there we go something like this now this is early stages this is not like 100% nailed I'm just slowly fixing these players up if I see any price rises then I'll bring those players in for those players that are not even changing at all and things like that um I do want Madison so I could just go back and get Joshua King and then I can uh, upgrade my midfielder to Madison by downgrading uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Then I can get a strong midfield. And then that means I'll have some bench issues. That's the problem. But I don't mind that. I want my benches to actually play and, and, and get me the points. And these players are very cheap. And those are the ones I'm playing right now. And then later on, slowly, once I bank my transfers, I'll be able to kind of switch those players around if they don't play. So, something like this that I'm thinking about. Um, let's just see what I was thinking as well afterwards. Maybe going for that strong um, five in the midfield. Something like this. Uh, remove Wilson. Now, if Wilson's price goes up, obviously, I will bring him in. Something like that. And go back and get Van Dyke just because I want a Liverpool um, defence there. And I got a really strong, really strong team for the long term. I got John McGinn that is quite cheap. I got a fantastic team going forward. This is what I'm talking about. Now, with all these kind of movements and changes I made, this I'm just doing this on the spot right now. Um, I will kind of like gather all of the information um, from you guys with your thoughts. Uh, just let me know what you think of what, what kind of strategy that I should go for. And if I look at this, fantastic fixtures for Arsenal. Very good fixtures for um, Chelsea. 
Bournemouth still got decent fixtures as well. And this is just because it's a cheap option than Callum Wilson. Mount, uh, Leicester as well. Let's have a quick look. Very good fixture. I'm going for the fixtures now. And I'm going with players that is probably going to go on form or already on form. Anyways, guys, this is just my first thoughts. Uh, I haven't really nailed on a team right now. I just thought I'll get this video out so you guys can see what my thoughts are. Obviously, I won't be benching um, John McGinn here uh, against Brighton. But if I do have um, Ryan in goal, then I might bench him, put him as my first bench like this. And Lundstrom will come in um, later on in game week 10. That's not too bad. That is a strong, strong team. That is a very, very strong team. Very good. I can captain a Boomer player, a Bamian. There's just a lot of captain options as well. Cheap options. I've, I'm really in love with this team right now. I don't even care if my bench does well. Because I'm happy that they do, they do well because they're in my team. I can get those values up as well. Because people, a lot of people are going to be thinking about transferring and getting these cheap options to get a really good team. Anyways, guys. Oh. A disappointing game week 8, but I think it should be fine for game week 9 and onwards. I have activated my wild cards. I cannot wait to change my players around. Oh my god. You let me know in the comments below what you think. If you see a really good option, a really like good combinations of players, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new and drop a like. If this video gets up to about 300 likes, I will definitely create a lot of videos throughout the international break to keep you guys busy and occupied and give you guys really good options going forward. Okay? Anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.